So I assume everyone can hear me now, right? Okay. So I'm going to start with psychotic disorders. My name is Franco Song. I'm a third year resident of the UCLA current psychiatry residency program. And um, I work together with Dr. Sun in this uh, presentation. And our faculty member is Dr. Ranjit Padi. So let's start talking about psychotic disorders. Um, by no means, I'm an expert in the field or in psychotic disorders or antipsychotics. And my extensive years of expertise are basically two and a half years of residency, so it's not that much. However, this is basically um, an overview of psychotic disorders so that you as primary care doctors are gonna be able to diagnose patients and treat them or at least know what the treatments are and know when to refer the patients to a psychiatrist. So um, we'll start with our objectives. We're gonna try to um, give you an overview on the DSM-4 criteria for psychotic disorders and explain some of the differential diagnosis. We'll talk about treatment and then we'll talk about when to consult psychiatry. As uh, she said, we'll be talking about anxiety disorders today. So the objective of my talk, um, first objective is to provide um, a basic introduction to anxiety disorders um, and also talk about the various different types of anxiety disorders there will be. Um, and the basic differential diagnosis um, of various medical conditions that could present as anxiety disorders, um, as well as some pertinent lab workup, um, basic pharmacology and non-pharmacological options to, to treat anxiety disorders, and as well as talk a little bit briefly about um, the referral process uh, to the psychiatric services. Um, so epidemiological um, studies show that a, Approximately 40 million Americans over age 18 um, are diagnosed with anxiety disorders per year, which is a very large number of people. Um, and that accounts for nearly 20% of the U.S. population. Um, and actually, um, anxiety disorders supersede uh, substance abuse disorders, which we know is very prevalent. And um, anxiety disorders actually are um, number one. Um, <clears throat> And it is the most common psychiatric problem seen by primary care physicians, um, which accounts for about 20% of psychiatric diagnoses seen by primary care doctors. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. So as Shazad mentioned, today I'm going to talk about an overview of mood disorders. So as an outline of what I'll be speaking about today, first I'm going to mention some statistics, then I'm going to mention a workup in regards to various mood disorders, and I'm going to focus on depressive disorders and also bipolar disorders, and outlining the diagnostic criteria for both, and also the treatment algorithms. And what I've done here is I've put psychiatry in brackets when mentioning bipolar disorders because I felt as though um, a psychiatrist should probably be involved in patient care, especially when dealing with bipolar disorders in particular. More statistics. Depression is ranked as the number one leading cause of disability worldwide, and this is from the World Health Organization. 59% of the US mental health drug prescriptions are actually written by family practice physicians and not psychiatrists. So I think this also outlines that generally people would assume that psychiatrists would be the ones to prescribe most psychiatric medications, but in fact, it's mostly family practice physicians. So in line with that, the objectives here are me to provide an overview of the mental health system, Kern County Mental Health. How is it that the psychiatry residency programs function within the Kern County mental health environment on that side, and how it relates to the role of the psychiatry residents. Provide an overview about the treatment of CI covered patients, because these are a select group of patients that we're agreeing to provide coverage to, which weren't seen up until last September 2009, I think is when we actually started accepting some CI patients on our side. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then again, to review the referral process and how is it that you complete the referral, where do you send it, and so on and so forth. Um, we've got attendings present on site on a daily basis and there's active supervision ongoing for all the patients that are referred, including the CI referral. 
And then, of course, our services. Um, we provide a variety of different therapy modalities, including cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, psychodynamic therapy approach, uh, supportive therapy, as well as medication management, some psychological testing, like I said, with the psych intern, and then some very basic case management. So I, at times, we can give some bus passes to some of, some of the patients. Um, and in a rare case, we've done a home visit before, but again, it's not something that we want to do on a regular basis. So if that's part of the consideration when you're referring a patient to us, that probably isn't going to be the best referral for us to be able to take on.